Hey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being here. I'm really excited to have this conversation today because one of definitely, I, I would say, the most popular kids in the store is a product <laughs> that you have a lot of expertise in. Um, but I think there's also a lot of confusion around it and why it might be good. So I'm super excited to have you here. I'm going to let you introduce yourself so that the folks can just get a little bit of sense of who you are and all of the amazing knowledge and experience that you bring to the conversation and then we can jump in. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. My name is Christina. I'm a holistic nutritionist with Kenfrev Natural Health. Um, and I'm here today to talk about magnesium and all of the amazing benefits of this incredible mighty mineral. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to dive into a little bit more detail and information with you today, Chris. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here. I, I jotted down a few questions um, just because I put it out to the community to see what everybody really wanted to know from this conversation um, and so that we can make sure that it has the most value, value for everybody and they're getting the information that they really wanted. So I guess I'm just going to kick off with the big one that, you know, people kind of come in saying, I've heard about magnesium, you know, everybody I know is taking it is it really that important? Is this something that should be on my radar? Yeah, that's, that's sort of the top question that we get in uh, health food here. And I mean, we know that magnesium is a, a mineral that's responsible for over 800 different enzymatic functions in the human body. Um, and that's very substantial. When we look at magnesium and where it's found within our body, we know that, um, you know, 65% of our magnesium stores are found within our bones, about 30 to 40% is found within our soft tissue. So that would be, you know, like our muscles and our, our heart, our nerve cells. And then a very small percent, about 1% is found within our blood. So when you actually look at the human body and all of the components that are utilizing magnesium day to day, it's found within every single cell of our body. There's a lot of work being done um, using magnesium as a cofactor for many different things. As I mentioned, uh, the nervous system, our cardiovascular system, our muscular system. Um, so there's a lot of different behind the scenes happening with this mineral that we might not realize how important or critical it really is and also how easily depleted we can become in, in the mineral of magnesium. So that's actually a perfect segue into my second question <laughs> is, is how do we know if we should be supplementing? How do I know if I'm getting enough from my diet or if actually taking a supplement is a good idea for me? That's a great question. Um, you know, there are sort of telltale signs on magnesium deficiency, but I always like to start like this. Um, you know, there are statistics that show that actually 43% of Canadians are showing a deficiency in magnesium. Wow, so that's a lot. It's, it's a pretty high number, especially when you think that, you know, magnesium should be abundant in our food source, but there are a lot of um, factors that strip magnesium from our food source. If you're someone who drinks coffee um, and, you know, we're kind of in a time right now where maybe <laughs> coffee consumption or alcohol consumption might have increased. Um, maybe if you're somebody who has, you know, a lot of sugar cravings or contains a lot of sugary foods, a lot of processed foods, fried foods. Um, if your fruit and vegetable intake is not as high, if you're not eating as many whole grains, those are all sources of magnesium within our food supply. So uh, if you're doing things that are depleting that, for example, you know, your diet isn't as abundant as it should, and we're drinking the coffee and alcohol, maybe you're on different medications um, that could be depleting it even further, sometimes even just environmental factors, right? That Depending whole grain piece is a big one right now, too, because the, you know, low you carb, know. high fat diets have been so popular for the last few years. I think a lot of people don't realize how big of an impact that that can have on their mineral status. Absolutely. People are tend to be kind of afraid of grains and carbohydrates, um, especially if we're looking for weight loss. Um, and that's one of the greatest sources of magnesium that you can get. So these are sort of things to consider when you're wondering, well, do I need magnesium? Um, what does your diet look like? What does your lifestyle look like? Are you a smoker? Uh, you know, those sort of things will severely deplete magnesium or inhibit the ability to absorb the mineral itself when you're actually taking it from different food sources. And then there are like those telltale signs of magnesium deficiency. So do you typically have a lot of muscle spasms and cramps, um, twitches, eye twitches, 
Are you a nervous person? Is there anxiety that's starting to, to come out? Uh, what's your sleep pattern like? Are you sleeping well? Or are you like, you know, not resting well in the evenings? Um, do you feel like you have heart palpitations? Is there a heart arrhythmia? There's a lot high blood pressure. There are hundreds of different uh, things that can come up when our magnesium levels are not up to par. And so uh, those are usually sort of the initial questions I ask someone. And if any of this resonates, then magnesium is a very safe mineral. Uh, you know, if you don't have any particular um, maybe kidney disorders or anything that might uh, impair the function of being able to expel extra minerals from the body, it's generally considered very safe. So um, most people who walk through the door, I recommend a magnesium supplement. <laughs> Awesome. So most of us would benefit from at least giving it a try and seeing if we're seeing some improvement in those areas, the sleep, the muscle cramps, the anxiety. Okay. Awesome. One thing I often hear when I recommend magnesium to someone is they'll say, I never realized how I felt when I didn't have it. And now I just feel so much better. So um, even if there's not like that extreme pressing thing, you know, there is just a feeling of general wellness after a supplementation with magnesium. Absolutely. That's one of my favorites when uh, I have customers that say, you know, well, I'm, I've been taking all this stuff. I, I don't know if it's doing anything. And mm -hmm. I said, well, stop taking it. Like, you know, so yeah. <laughs> stop taking it for a week and see how you feel. And they're like, oh, <laughs> you know, that was a bad experiment. <laughs> and they, and it, but it really does give you that like immediate biofeedback that there are certain things that are really propping us up in a big way. And until we actually take it away, we don't necessarily realize how much better we can be feeling um, or how much worse we could or be how much feeling. Worse. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to play that game. Yeah. <laughs> Not now for sure. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. So I know in my store, we go to the magnesium shelf. There is like an entire two rows um, of so many different options. So, a couple of things that I want you to help us out with, if you can, um, is that there's different formats, like, you know, this one's a powder, there's a liquid bottle, capsules are sort of the most standard. Is there any um, differences across all of these different delivery methods? And then the second thing, um, the second part of the question is that the formats start to change, right? As you see the word glycinate on some bottles, you'll see the word citrate on some bottles. Um, we've got a malate on the shelf. So um, delivery method and then form of magnesium, how does that influence our choice? Like what should we be looking for? Well, within, you know, as you know, within vitamins and minerals, there are typically different forms of um, different vitamins and minerals that you can get. And some are absorbed in different ways in the human body. Um, when we're talking about first the format that we're taking it in versus capsules versus liquid versus powder, um, typically, you know, age can be a factor. Um, you know, if you've got a family and there's a lot of young kids and you want to be able to offer magnesium to the entire family, I always like having a powder or a liquid just because of ease of intake, right? Um, you can mix it in a smoothie or other things that you're doing. You know, we're kind of coming into an era where we have pill fatigue, where it's like everyone's taking different things, especially right now, we're all focusing on our immune system. And there might be a few extra supplements that we're taking that we weren't taking, you know, last year at this time. And so having a powder or something you can drink throughout the day, like the one that you showed there, um, there's some really great flavors, blueberry and tropical, and they taste amazing. Like I give them to my three kids, they're eight and under, and they're like, they like yell at me if they don't get magnesium in their water. <laughs> Because it's just, you know, it's just a good flavor. So um, if you're someone who's just kind of exhausted by it, the idea of taking another capsule right then and there, that's where we're looking at powder versus and liquid. Um, the other option is capsules are generally very well tolerated. I'm not a big fan of tablets, especially if you already have some sort of digestive concern, um, you know, Crohn's, colitis, IBS, low stomach acid. Um, sometimes those tablets will come out the way they came in if you don't have the right digestion, right? So looking for something that's already um, an easier way to break down, those little capsules are just in like, um, you know, a, a veggie cap format. And so as soon as they come into your stomach, that your stomach acid breaks them down and they disperse. The difference with a liquid and a powder is that when you're drinking it, you already have that immediate sort of coverage. 
in your, your stomach that you're already starting absorption from many different types. So it's a little bit quicker to break down and absorb than a capsule, but really generally capsules are very well tolerated. Um, and so those will be sort of the main differences of how you decide to take the product, right? Okay, so that one's more of a preference thing, how it's gonna fit into your life. How does it fit okay. into your life? You know, if you wanna have magnesium in your purse, so that you can pop it on the road maybe the powder is like not the greatest you know you're driving and mixing it's not it's not going to work you know so definitely lifestyle is a factor um you know in my house i actually have both i have capsules and powder as i said i do use the powder for um the whole family but for myself i do take extra magnesium um just because of my lifestyle very busy i think i i I push through a lot of magnesium. So I always take an extra capsule at bed because I do find it helps to sort of relax and sleep. So maybe you have a little bit of everything. It all depends on, on sort of what your life is like. And then in terms of um, the form of magnesium, there are many different forms of magnesium. Um, I'll talk about my three favorites. Um, so we have magnesium bisglycinate. We'll start with that. That's sort of my ultimate um, first go-to for magnesium for anything. And essentially what bisglycinate means is we have a magnesium molecule and we bind it to the amino acid glycine. And glycine, once you bind these two molecules, um, it becomes something called chelated. And so when we have a chelated magnesium, it actually takes a different path of absorption within our body. It's able to pass the intestinal barrier a lot easier and quicker as opposed to other forms of magnesium. So it makes it a very gentle form of magnesium and an optimal form for absorption and assimilation within the body. Um, binding it to the glycine as well. Glycine is an amino acid that's generally very calming to the body. So if somebody has a little bit of extra stress, I don't know anybody who does, but <laughs> oh, no, no. we're all fine. We're fine. Yeah. If, some, if somebody has a little bit of extra stress in their life, or, you know, there's a bit more um, anxiety or nervousness, I always gear right towards the glycinated formula because on top of that ultra gentle absorption, where you can maybe take a higher dose if you need to have that relief, um, you're getting the effects of the glycine. Uh, so definitely one of my favorites. Um, you're not going to get uh, the loose stools like you would with another form of magnesium. I'll talk about uh, magnesium citrate. So magnesium citrate is another form of magnesium. It's, it's generally well tolerated. However, most people use this form uh, for like constipation relief. Yeah. So, right? Yeah, that's what I see a lot, especially when people are asking me, you know, uh, what form is best for me? My first question is, what are you using it for? Because mm -hmm. if they're going for that mild laxative effect, then I yeah. know that the citrate uh, is going to be a better option for them. Um, if they're going for the better sleep, the anxiety, uh, the muscle cramps, then I know the glycinated form is going to be a better option. Absolutely. And I mean, you nailed it. So the citrate is sort of my first option of go to if someone says I heard magnesium was good for constipation, I generally wouldn't go to the glycinate first, I would go to the citrate because the citrate, the reason why it's great for constipation is it's generally not as absorbed as the bisglycinate. So your body's trying to expel, it's pulling water from your body and it's trying to expel that extra magnesium salt, uh, which causes loose stool and diarrhea and adds for constipation relief, which is a really great option um, to try before any laxative, as we know, because we know the laxatives, although sometimes they can be of assistance, we don't wanna use them regularly. So magnesium is a nice uh, non sort of addictive way to sort of help your body um, just have that relief. In the other term, if you're someone who's very stressed and like just constantly like tense, bisglycinate might be able to help with that because maybe that's, maybe your constipation isn't necessarily coming from dietary or fluid. Maybe it's just coming from anxiousness and stress and that sort of gut brain connection. So definitely speaking to somebody knowledgeable in store or a practitioner that can kind of decipher what magnesium makes sense for your body is, is very important. Um, and then there's magnesium malate, which is another really great form. It's oh, actually yeah. very, yeah, it's highly absorbed. Um, I love malate for any sort of um, muscle condition as well. It's great. It's in a lot of cardiovascular formulas. You'll see malate because malate tends to be one form of magnesium that's really supportive to muscle. And we know heart is just, uh, you know, one strong muscle in our body. Um, and so those are generally for working out fibromyalgia. Yeah. Um, you know, arrhythmias, things like that. I tend to like to go towards the malate, but my sort of one-stop shop tends to be the bisglycinate. I just find that it, 
it generally um, handles many sort of symptoms of magnesium deficiency uh, pretty well. So, Awesome. Yeah, that's definitely what I see here as well is the this glycinate tends to help the broadest range of people um, and then the odd customer with a really stubborn case of constipation will add in some citrate or I do have some fibromyalgia customers that really like the malate for that. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun to give them all, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they all have their place and they're all sort of special in their own way. So Absolutely. They yeah. do. Absolutely. And I mean, like you, like we said before, the relief that you can find from a magnesium supplement for so many different things. Um, it's really great to see somebody come back after a few weeks and just be like, wow, it was just, you know, I just needed a little bit more of this in my body. Awesome. So my last kind of question um, that is burning in my mind, and you touched on it a little bit with the arrhythmias and the high blood pressure is right now we're in February. February is heart month. And uh, so is there a way that magnesium and regular magnesium supplementation could really be beneficial as preventative or as treatment for cardiovascular health? Well, I mean, in, in terms of preventative, we're always looking at working with our practitioners and seeing, you know, what could be a complementary treatment. Um, if you've already been diagnosed with a, you know, cardiovascular condition, we always want to be mindful of any sort of medications and things that we're on. But in terms of magnesium to support our heart, magnesium is responsible for calcium regulation for regulation of the, you know, sodium and potassium. These are minerals that are ultra important for our heart. Our, our heart needs these to be balanced in order to function appropriately. And so magnesium is a crucial mineral in sort of supporting that balance in these minerals. And so when we're looking at something like arrhythmia, or um, we'll start with there. So arrhythmia or palpitation is essentially like your heart, you know, they're skipping a beat. There's a pause in, in your heartbeat. And, you know, calcium works on muscular contraction, right? Magnesium works on muscular relaxation. So when we are looking at our heart and pumping and beating, it's really essential that we have those minerals working in a balanced function so that we can have that. So there are a lot of people that are working with their practitioners that see improvement while taking magnesium for something like palpitations, um, even something like in increased calcification in our arteries. Magnesium, along with things like vitamin K, can really help to bring the calcium and regulate the calcium in the the right areas of our body so that we can reduce or avoid calcification in our arteries. So it's, it is very crucial. Anybody who's concerned or has a history of family heart disease or anything, adding a magnesium supplement um, would be a really great way to just kind of have that extra benefit and support to our cardiovascular system. Um, and especially if there are symptoms that are already there, there might be more that's needed, but just to support that general blood vessel health, arterial, uh, you know, you know, contraction and relaxation, hundred percent, um, crucial, crucial mineral for that. And, you know, we, I just want to touch on the fact that some people might be saying, I don't really need to supplement. I eat, I do eat all those things. I eat everything. Like she said, you know, I have grains, I don't drink coffee. Um, but what we're, we're not understanding is that magnesium within our soil. And I briefly touched on this. It's, it's very depleted in 2021, you know, when we're looking at agricultural practices, um, there's a lot of uh, practices over the past 100 years that have stripped mineral from our soil. So especially even if you're not eating organic, at least if we're eating organic, we know there might be, you know, higher levels, but if we're not eating organic, or we're just not, we're eating it, but um, we might not be getting the same amount of magnesium that was in the food 100 years ago. You know, there was a, a study that sort of followed um, soil uh, agriculture and minerals of magnesium. And so they measured it from, I believe it was the year 1940 to 1991. And from testing the soil in 1940 and testing it in 1991, they found that magnesium depleted within vegetables by 26% wow. over that time and depleted in fruit by 16%. And so you know, these studies were done 30 years ago. So what is our magnesium content like in our food now? So that's where even if we, you know, we're talking about this and, you know, if any of this resonates 100% look into something like that. Yeah, it's, uh, 
it's wild. So where we are, we're in a strip mall, like a little plaza with other stores on either side of us. And there's a florist that she has beautiful plants and, um, and flowers in her store. And so she has a greenhouse and she grows some of her own things. And we were chatting and she was saying, yeah, it's amazing that the plants that I add extra bone meal to the soil, mm -hmm. the growth is like exponentially greater than the ones where she doesn't add bone meal and those are those that minerals right like yes. the mag the calcium those those minerals for life so it yeah. really does start with the soil like everything yes. and then as we move up the food chain if it's not there we're not getting it so yeah um yeah. you know things like supplementation do become more important because you know that it starts to become a, a more of a main source of some of absolutely. these things. Absolutely. Um, yeah. We started doing that at our house, you know, practicing uh, composting because our garden was starting to get very pitiful. It's something I'm working on and I can be honest that it's, it's not, it's not the greatest garden you'll ever see, uh, but we're working on it. And um, you know, we, we started our own composting and we started to add uh, like kelp into our mm. soil and honestly, the last year when we kind of came in and, you know, things were looking a little dreary and we added these kelps and we mulched and we did everything we need to do. We noticed within a week, the difference in the plant. Wow. And so it, it, we are consuming that and that becomes every cell of our body. So um, it does absolutely start with the soil. Amazing. You have been a gold mine of information. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I know that our community will find this information so helpful. So thank you so much for your time and your knowledge. And I hope that you will come back and chat with me again. Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you so much for creating this space and your community. I love what you've got on the go all the time. And I appreciate uh, having the chance to be a part of it, Kristen. Thank Amazing. you. Thank you.